Hey everybody, it's Legend. One of my biggest goals with this channel is to educate. I really want to help people out. Even if someone takes a minute piece of information and it helps them in life from my channel, that's good enough for me. Now today I'm going to be talking about a special subject many of us have never looked into or heard of. And that's the five different ways your body loses heat or the five heat loss mechanisms. It doesn't matter if you're outdoors or indoors, this is the way it happens. The first heat loss mechanism we're going to talk about is the most common. It happens to everybody every day as long as they're alive. And you guys might be surprised by this, but the number one way we lose heat is through respiration. Excuse the bad spelling if I do spell anything wrong and my bad handwriting, but I really want to help you guys out. So respiration, let's talk about it. Every time you breathe, your body actually warms up the air before it gets to your lungs. If you ever blow on your hand, you'll notice as you exhale, all the air that's coming out is warm air. That's where your body's losing a lot of heat. So how do we combat this? Well, you can't stop breathing, so let's get that off the table. Let's just take some examples. When you go to extremely cold climates and look at the people, what do they do? They wear scarves, they wear stuff to cover their mouths. And how does this help? Well, you don't have to heat the air as much going into your lungs, so you don't have to use as much heat energy Therefore, you're burning less calories and keeping yourself warmer. So that's the primary heat loss mechanism. Let's talk about the second. The second one is also very common, and you guys might be able to guess this one. It's called evaporation. Evaporation. Again, excuse the bad handwriting. The primary way our bodies go through evaporative heat loss is through sweating. Think about it. When we're out there working or hiking, what happens? Our clothing starts to collect sweat. Our body skin gets a small layer of moisture over it. But when that moisture on your skin or in your clothing starts to evaporate, what happens? That heat is drawn away from your body and you start losing body heat. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing when it's extremely hot out because that's the primary way we lose our heat. Just like for dogs and animals, they pant through respiration and that's the way they lose theirs. There are many ways to combat evaporation. One is to go at a slower pace. You're not sweating as much. Also, when you're in extremely cold climates, going at an extreme pace may cause you to sweat a lot. And the more you sweat, the more heat you lose. And the colder it is and the wetter you are, the colder you are. So be aware of that. Also, a good way to combat evaporation is to replenish your body. This will also keep you hydrated, keep your body working right, and it'll be good for you. Now let's talk about the next level of heat mechanism. The next heat loss mechanism is called radiation. You guys will know what this is once I explain it. There we go. Radiation, let's talk about it. If you lay by a good campfire, what do you feel? You feel the warmth. You're gaining heat being radiated by the fire. Another way to think about this is that while you're gaining heat, the fire is losing heat to its environment. It's the same with you. When your surroundings are cold, you may radiate warmth and so be losing heat to your surroundings. So how do we combat radiation? Well, many folks think that heat loss from radiation happens just from exposed skin. That's not true. Even if you're dressed, heat radiates from your body to your attire, then from your clothing to your surrounding environment. So how do we combat this? Wear the best clothing you can for the proper environment you're in. Now you'll still lose heat, but it won't be as much. You may be able to retain heat longer. So wear the proper layers. I just did a video on that. You'll see it in my recent videos. You need to wear a proper base layer, mid layer, and external layer or shell layer. Wear everything to the best of your ability and you'll be able to combat it. The information I just talked about really plays well into the next mechanism of heat loss, which is called convection. So let me write that down. Convection. So let's talk about it. Convective heat loss occurs between a material surface and a moving fluid or gas that it comes in contact with. The air closest to your skin is warm by the body. If this warm air is allowed to move away from your body, the chillier air will take its place and more heat will be lost warming the cold air. That's the best way I can explain it. You need to don insulating clothing layers and you really need to have a good shell layer with convection. When wind and low temperatures conspire to create the perfect conditions for convective heat loss, that's just the best way to combat it. Unless your shell clothing layer is windproof, cold air passing over your body will remove the warm air and the body's warmth away from you. If you ever stick your hand in front of a fan, what happens? 
After a few minutes, your hand gets cool. If you touch it to other parts of your body, you can feel this. It has pushed the convective air around your skin or your clothing out of the way and made you less warm. Now this is different than radiation. Radiation is the actual heat coming off your body. Convective heat is the heat that's actually around the airspace from your body, skin, and clothing. Let's talk about the last way your body loses heat. And that's through conduction. Conduction. You guys are going to hate that, me always saying that. So conduction, let's talk about it. Heat loss through conduction comes through direct contact with cold surfaces or objects. Every time you touch something with bare skin, what happens? If it's cool, wherever you touched becomes cooler. That object is drawing heat away from your body. So how do we combat this? We put a layer of something in between that object and us. If we had to sit on a block of ice directly, what would happen? We literally freeze our butts off. It would draw all the heat away from our bodies. But if we put something in between that, it would take a lot longer to lose that body's heat. So we need to insulate and protect. That's the way you combat conductive heat loss. Well, those are the five heat loss mechanisms. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I appreciate it if you let me know what you guys thought of it. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll be doing more survival videos in the future. Do video responses. I'll talk to you guys later.